This episode of this Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey is brought to you by energy healer Jean Borders' personal powerful transformation program. Know you're leaving money on the table but can't figure out how to bring it in? Need to double your productivity and profitability? Need an extra push to get things moving in the right direction? Visit www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com slash transformation now and apply for a business consultation with Jean. Welcome to the Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey, where we take out your emotional baggage and heal your emotional body so you get to enjoy the success you desire and deserve. Prepare to feel a sense of relief and empowerment as we get rid of the baggage you've been carrying that's held up your business success up until now. Be sure to visit our website at www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, lean in, get comfortable, and prepare to take off. Hi, everyone. This is Jean Border, your host with the Focus Practical Dreamer's Journey. I have a special guest here today. This is Lynn Tranchell, and she is going to discuss with me um, different mindset techniques that will help you create what you're trying to create in your in your personal or in your business life. Hi, Lynn. Nice to Hello. see you. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about you and your work. Yeah, well, it was a number of years ago, um, and uh, my mother was dying of cancer, and I just ended a significant relationship. So I went to um, a, um, a coffee hour that I always wanted to go, and, and I discovered a bookstore there, and it was in a church, and it was Unity Church. So I started, I figure any place that sells books that I read, because I don't, I don't read your average books, there's a place for me to go. So I started attending the church there. Uh, I started teaching classes, and then I, I, I started taking classes and teaching classes, and I really loved it when people got it, when that light bulb goes off and they start seeing things differently and doing things differently. So my first coaching certification was through the church, and I still loved it. So I went out looking for a more secular coaching certifications. So that's how I, that's how I began this coaching journey. Well, and who, who do you work with? What's your ideal client? Yeah. My ideal client are entrepreneurs who are in that phase of they've, they've been a little successful and they, for some reason, have this feeling if they just work harder, they can get to the next level when it's really not working harder. It's even not working smarter per se. It's working more in alignment with your goals so that you can achieve those goals faster and easier. But we're taught to work harder, right? If you wait really hard, you're going to get the results. If you don't work hard, you're not working. Mm -hmm. You don't really want it. Yeah. And that, that really, that mentality adds to the stress of an entrepreneur because they think that if they're not getting the success that they want, it's because they're not working harder. So they stay on that same well-worn path and do a little work harder and harder and harder on that one path when there's a million other paths out there. That's one of the things that I find with my clients a lot is they're so focused on this, they don't even see all the other possibilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, this other possibility might be a whole lot easier. It might fit the way they work better than what they've been so set on, right? So talk to me about the science. Yeah. So what I help people do is come up with a vision of where they want to go. And then the second step, that's step number one. Second step is your habits, specifically your thought habits. Because whenever you try to do something new, that little voice comes up and tells you all kinds of things, distracts you, dissuades you, because its sole purpose is to keep you safe. So when you go to do something, it has no idea what the outcome is going to be. It sends up those warning signals, and it tries to keep you from doing that. So that actually is the good news. Because if you weren't 
moving forward, that voice would be fat, dumb, happy, and silent. So I tell people, whenever you hear that voice, that's a good thing because that means you're taking action. That's interesting. I, I, I use that all the time. Your subconscious, the only role, its only role is to keep you alive. So it filters everything through the view of, is this safe? And the uncertain out there, how, how does it know if that's safe, if, if you've never done it before? So that's something really to be aware of. Something else that we were talking earlier, just so everybody knows, but one of the things you mentioned is you're very much into working with the law of vibration with your client. Talk to me about that. Yeah. So I'm assuming everybody, because they're on your podcast, knows about the law of attraction, which is you attract what you affirm. Uh, really, the law of attraction is the secondary law. The law of vibration is primary. So when you can get into that vibration of who you want to be, what you want to create, and really be in that vibration of being that person, I like to say be it until you see it. Everything works faster. It gets the law of attraction to work faster so that you create better results with less effort. So be it until you see it. Isn't that like Faking my way through? Well, it's not really because when you say fake it, your subconscious still thinks you're faking it, so it's really not you. When you say be it until you see it, then you are in a space of knowing this is who I am and this is what I can do as that person to move forward. So you take that action based on that beingness instead of that fakingness. And, and it makes it much easier and, again, gets you into that vibration of what you would love to create. Okay, so for those people who don't understand vibration, can you talk to me about what you mean by that? Be yeah. Vibration. Did you ever walk into a room and everybody was angry and you started feeling angry and you took on this feeling of angry? And then you walk into a room and everybody is happy and everybody is laughing and you start to feel happy and you start to feel um, in that same mood. That is the vibration of happy and angry. So when we're in that vibration of what we want to create of that person, then we're in alignment with what we want to be, do, and have. Usually they say do... Um, have, be, do, but it's really be, do, have. If you can be it and be in that vibrational state of that, then you can have it much easier. It's sort of, some people kind of call it magic, but it's really not magic because you're doing the work. A lot of times what, what helps me is if there's something that I want or I want a certain part of a lifestyle that I see, it's if I wanted that, if I wanted to be in that moment, how would I feel mm. that it already happened, Happy. right? Mm -hmm. And that comes back to vibration. There's a, an old Beach Boy song called Good Vibrations that to me just totally depicts this, right? You walk exactly. into a room and you get a weird feeling from somebody. You just don't connect with them. It's like, stay away. And then you walk into another room, like you said, and you just feel like you belong, right? So if there's something that you want, you need to foster that feeling of this is where I belong. And that vibration, I'm going to use energy work, energy talk. Sorry, people who are not into that. But the vibration that you are now emitting matches up with the vibration that that person in that situation is emitting. And so there is this natural, I'm going to use law of, attraction, law of attraction stuff, a natural attraction that happens between the two because the vibrations feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really what it's about is is finding people that are in the same vibration as you and if you are in a situation that you really want to be in 
and the vibration doesn't feel right, you can shift your vibration to match what you want. How do that? Instead of, well, you just want to know that this is who I am. And if this is who I am, what would I be doing right now? How would I be acting right now? And then step into that place of being that person. Uh, and it gets back to the be it until you see it uh, concept. So you can imaginally step into anything you want because at any given moment, there are if infinite possibilities and you get to choose which one you want to focus on and then become it. I, I repeat this a lot. What you believe to be true is true for you. If you believe that that's possible for you and that I'm just going to, I'm going to be living the life that it's already happened, then that's the reality you live. But if you live in the space, well, that's him and I could never get it. You're not going to feel the same vibration. You're not going to feel the same certainty. You're not going to feel like you belong in that space, right? Yeah. Or if you let circumstance get in the way of what you really want. Um, if you're constantly looking outside of yourself to the economy, to your education, to what your parents taught you, to what your neighbor is saying, then that clouds your judgment and it makes it even more difficult to to get to where you really want because those voices are keeping you from moving forward. And just like your subconscious trying to keep you safe. A lot of times when people question your next move. It's not It's not because they want to sabotage your life. They just want to protect you. And that is so common. People, you might have created a dream for yourself, but before it has become reality, you started talking about it mm -hmm. with people who don't necessarily agree with that as a dream for you or a possibility for you or safe for you. And so talking about it too soon, not protecting what you really want, can create all this negative feedback from your peers, from your family, because they want to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But you saw you a possibility. To, yeah, you have to pay attention to and really um, be only let certain people know your your new vision. It's just like when you have a baby, you don't hand the baby off to just anybody. You hand the baby off to people that you trust. So when you're talking about your vision in the beginning, it's important to keep it to yourself because if you share it the wrong person, they could just give you a look like, really? And that will completely undermine everything you're trying to do and cause doubt. And doubt is a big stumbling block, especially when you're just starting your venture, your business, whatever whatever path you're just starting down, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So talk to me about neuroplasticity. Yeah. Well, if you follow Joe Dispenza, he says that thoughts that fire together, wire together. So when you have thoughts that don't support where you want to go, you can change them. Um, I have this AIR method, A-I-R-R, -R, that I work with people on. And first one, A, is awareness. And then once you're aware of those thoughts that aren't supporting you, you interrupt them with uh, something like, up until now, or I used to. Then you release that old thought, replace it with a thought you want. Something like, up until now, I was overwhelmed with all I had to do. And now I'm taking the action I need to every day. And then the key fact in that is... After you replace it, you want to take action. Action is like the ground wire to electricity. Without action, nothing happens. So you replace those old thought habits and then you take action. And it's the action in reinforcing those thought habits that changes your, your neural connections if you do it over and over again. And so then does that become your new normal? Mm-hmm. Yep, that becomes your new normal. And then everything you do can be against, you know, what your vision. And, then, and your vision is how you, it's a guiding light. You say, you look at something, is that follow my vision? Yes, no. If it's yes, keep going. If it's no, you get back on track. 
So you mentioned the air technique that you use. When someone first comes to you, what is your focus with a, a new client? How do you start to work with first, a client? First step is to have your vision, the vision of the life and business that you would love. And it's always based on what would I love, not what circumstances stay, what would I love? Because you see things differently when you think, what would I love? And then once they have that vision, I get into those thought habits because then those voices start speaking to them. And then the third key is to take action. So your vision, you wanna hone in on your vision and then constantly shift your thought habits to support where you wanna go and then take action to ground those new thought habits. Can you give me some examples of what's possible using these yeah. techniques with clients that you've seen? Yeah, um, I have one client, Gina, who when she started with me, she was a people pleaser. So she said yes to way too many clients and she felt sorry for them. So she didn't charge them. And after working with me, she got really clear on who she wanted, who she loved working with. And she learned to say no to the people that weren't in her ideal client. And she doubled her income and she's well on the way to tripling her income by just staying focused on the people she wanted to work with and saying no to the other people. And she also started charging what she was worth. It's so hard, it can be so hard when people are just starting in business to say no to any opportunity to have cash flowing in. Setting boundaries, that's like, I refer to it a lot of times as setting boundaries is so necessary mm -hmm. for your health, for the health of your business, um, and for your business growth. Because if you say yes to everything, and if you're not charging because you think it's not appropriate, and I'm in a service-based business, this is a service. I, it's all the guilt that can come with charging money for something that I can do easily for me, so I should be doing it and giving it away for free. That guilt can be a hard thing to to get past. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I tell my clients that guilt is a useless emotion, so. And that's very easy to it. say and very hard to work through. It is, all. it is. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Yeah. But the fact that I think the fact that people are on your podcast means that they're in a different level than the average person. Well, they're on it definitely because the energy world is growing so quickly. The acceptance of the fact that energy is just energy. Thoughts are just thoughts and they can be changed. Mm -hmm. That's not something that's been mainstream a lot in the yeah. past, right? It's all work hard, work hard, set a goal, follow this process. Well, your process may not work for Joe Blow on the street. And his process definitely may not work for me. Mm -hmm. It's not completely about process. Yes, process helps. It can help us take specific steps in a specific order so that the process, so that the overall goal is easier to achieve, right? But... It's not all about process. Energy is a very interesting concept. Mindset is huge. You know, 20% action, 80% psychology. That's That's been around for a few decades now. But it's still something we internally can struggle with. But if I just did this, you know, they did this and they got this result. Well, that worked for them. It may not mm -hmm. work for you. It may work for you. Right now. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. It's important to just notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you so much for being on our show. I've enjoyed our conversation greatly. Um, how do people work with you? Is that all one-on-one -on -one work or do you work with groups? I, I love working with groups because it creates a synergy when there's the same people working on similar things all at once. Cool. So for our listeners who are interested in working with you either one-on-one -on -one or with groups, all your contact information is down below. And all they have to do is click on the link and they'll be taken right to you. Um, I want to thank you so much for being here and spending time with me today. 
Yeah, this was fun. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and so for our listeners, th thank you once more for tuning in. I hope you get really valuable information from our time together. This is Jean Border, your host with the Focus Practical Dreamers Journey podcast. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Focused Practical Dreamers Journey, where we take out your emotional baggage and heal your emotional body so you get to enjoy the success you desire and deserve. Remember to visit our website at www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey.